What's going on guys, Bex back, and today quantitative tightening started and that means that the Fed is going to stop the quantitative easing process, not letting as much money out into the economy and actually start trying to take money out of it. So in a time where there's a lot of recessionary fears and everything going on, it's a question of how long can they actually do this? And the markets didn't react very well to it today, having a little bit of a red day. And uh, the also basis point hikes that are coming with Canada's news that they're actually going to increase basis points as the expected 50 basis points on their rates. But they said that they are willing to actually go above and beyond to go after inflation. So little bit of news if Canada's banks doing it maybe the Fed will do it we'll see what happens but the market didn't really like it too much so we can see quantitative tightening starts today the first time since 2018 do you think it's bearish or bullish it's I don't know how long they can actually do this for so with the tightening and the place that the economy is in right now it's not a very good place the stock market is not in a very good place so how long can they actually tighten for is the real question with a lot of people calling for the complete reversal by the end of this year where Jerome Powell comes out and basically says quantitative easing is back on and tries to flush money into the system yet again. We can see right here on this this next tweet that they started tightening tomorrow, which is today, and they're going to process $47.5 billion per month for the first three months. Then it will increase to the full $95 billion three months later. They're trying to reduce their balance sheet by $7.6 trillion by 2023's end. I don't know how accurate that is, $7.6 billion. I think it's like one and a half or trillion. I think it's like one and a half trillion, but 7.6 trillion. There's no way they're getting rid of that, that much in their, in their balance sheet. There's just absolutely no way who is going to buy it. First of all, $7.6 trillion. Who is going to buy that? That's a big first question. And then the second question, dumping that much money out into the market or dumping that much in bonds is going to suck money out of the stock market, which is already in a severely weak spot. And it's already in bear market territory for everything, but like the S and B and Dow and the S and B is almost there. So I, exactly how much they can actually do of this is the big question. Obviously we know JP Morgan CEO came out says to brace yourself for an economic hurricane, but how really trustworthy can that be? When you look and you see Jamie Dimon on May 23rd saying credit looks really good. We've never seen it this good. And then on June 1st, brace for an economic hurricane. Everyone, everyone thinks the Fed can handle this. That hurricane is right out there coming our way. So a huge flip-flop in a week. So, I mean, does he even know what he's talking about? Nobody knows what to expect. No one knows what's going to happen. Is the Fed actually going to try and sell off all this stuff? Probably not. I don't think they're going to be able to do it. And if they can do it, that's going to suck so much money out of the stock market and into these bonds because the rates are going to go sky high. And a lot of people are going to rather take a guaranteed four, five percent, six percent rate in a bond than go and get a risky seven to ten percent return in the stock market. And we also have the Bank of Canada. You can see here hikes another 50 basis points, which was to be expected. That's what they were supposed to do. That's what was priced in. And but this was the bigger problem, says it warns it is prepared to attack more forcefully if needed. So if the Bank of Canada would be willing to put this out there and say this and say we're willing to go after inflation and push these rate hikes to stop it, then the Fed, Jerome Powell, could come out and say we're willing to do the same thing. We're going to Paul Volcker this whole thing and just shoot rates up to 9%. And obviously if he did that, that would be massive problems. And a lot of the stock market, the entire stock market would plummet if he did that. So we don't really want to see that happen. And if we look at the Federal Reserve's balance sheet, we can see from 2008, it is over just about 10 X since 2008 where it's at about $800 billion worth here. You can see 2008, obviously we know that recession, massive printing brings it up to $2.1 trillion, kinds of goes flat, but continues going up and up and up. We see major more printing kind of starting to come down. 
And then the printing starts again before even 2020. In 2019, there was major printing. And then obviously we know 2020, 4 trillion up to $7 trillion, almost doubled overnight in just a couple of days, a couple of weeks, doubling their balance sheet from $4 trillion to $7 trillion, and then continued steps up to almost $9 trillion. And we can see from this next chart, there's, this is what people are, this is what a lot of like bankers and economists are saying that the Fed wants to get to. So this would be their balance sheet now. And then they want to get down here uh, by whatever, by selling off and tapering and doing all of these things. And I highly doubt that they're ever going to be able to get there just because the selling pressure of that would be so much. First, who's buying it? Who has that much money to buy $7 trillion worth of stuff? I just don't see that. And on top of that, if they were to even do that and push it out, that would be massive amounts of money moving from the stock market to the bond market, crushing the stock market even further than it's been crushed right now. And it's just not a good situation for anybody. So I don't see them actually doing it. And you can see right here, them talking about it. Quantitative tightening may add to upward pressure on real yields. The Institute said, along with the other forms of tightening and financial conditions, this represents a further headwind for risk assets. So risk assets even the stock market is a risk asset compared to bonds so if bond yields go up to a massive amount to say four percent people and investors will move their money from stocks to bonds because you can get a guaranteed four percent instead of a risky and volatile seven to ten percent in the stock market so that's a massive thing that will happen you see them also say we expect the Fed to reduce its asset holdings by more than three trillion dollars over the next couple of years, enough to bring the balance sheet back in line with its pre-pandemic level as a share of GDP. So this also, I don't think they can really do that. I don't think they're gonna be able to get this done. Uh three trillion dollars over a course of a couple of years. So, like say two years, one and a half trillion every year. I don't is the buying pressure there for one and a half trillion maybe from like pensions and stuff and fixed income and retirement maybe it's there for that but it would be very difficult for the stock market too it'd be pulling money out of the stock market risk assets wouldn't be able to perform as well there would be a lot of the move towards bonds so will they be able to do it i don't know i don't think so but only time will tell and you can see even them saying the, the the Fed might stop QT, uh, quantitative tightening, prematurely if economic conditions sour, he said. So we already know the economy is kind of not in a great spot. We know inflation is barreling through the economy, wrecking things. People are not spending money. People barely even have saved money at this point. So a lot of things going wrong, a lot of things that need to try and get fixed. So uh, if they, if the, continues to get worse and people continue to have less money saved way more debt much more problems and if inflation doesn't fix itself or turn down they could stop the tightening to try and fix the economy a little bit i think if they have inflation have an inflection point where it starts to go down or starts to not go up so much and bear even out and then start to go down then i think that Jerome Powell and the Fed might stop tightening and start a little bit of easing, not like they were before, but at least a little bit to try and help the economy because it's not in a good spot. And with QT putting upward pressure on treasury term premiums, which alongside a further slowdown in economic growth will add to the headwinds facing the stock market with them selling off their balance sheet, that's going to push up yields. And as yields go up, People, instead of investing in the stock market, will pull dollars out of the stock market, put it into the bond market, like we've said before, to get guaranteed return instead of a risky, volatile one. So if that happens and they see the stock market start really crashing, they might have to also stop tightening so much and start easing more and buying bonds so that people start investing in the stock market. So it's a really tricky thing that's going on with the Fed and how they're doing everything. It's definitely not an easy line to walk on. So, you know, tough, tough for Jerome Powell to do it. But you know, with everything that's going on, I just don't see them hitting their goals that they set out, like $3 trillion, selling off $3 trillion over a couple of years, bringing this stuff down, 
not having the stock market collapse and putting the economy in a good spot while tightening. I, I just don't see it. We can see the U.S. 10-year is on the rise. It was over 3% uh, a little bit ago, a couple weeks ago. So we see it rising actually back to that as well, almost 3% yet again. And this, they just started tapering today. So we'll keep an eye on this as they keep selling. This rate should keep going up because they're going to be selling tons and tons of bonds. Selling pushes the rate up. Buying pushes the rate down. So this, if this goes up to like 4%, 5%, I think there can be even 3.5%, something that's not crazy, but people would rather take that instead of investing in stocks. So if we see this start to go up like 3.5%, 4%, 5%. I think the stock market is really going to suffer. People are going to pull money out to buy a guaranteed return. So the real question with all this tightening is, can the Fed actually do it for a prolonged period of time? Can they do it more than just the remainder of this year or for the next year and a half or two years? It's something I don't think they can actually get done selling off their balance sheet. I don't think it's going to be able to be done. I think they're going to have to turn around maybe by the end of this year. If inflation turns down, they might turn around the end of this year and start quantitative easing again to try and kickstart the economy. If inflation doesn't turn down, then they probably don't do that till next year or whenever inflation starts to turn down. They can have an inflection point. Uh, once ever that happens, I think they'll turn into quantitative easing and stop tightening. So we'll see how the Fed responds after this quantitative tightening has been going on for some time, see how it affects the stock market, the bond market, see everything going on and, uh, you know, assess more from there. But I don't think they can do it for a long period of time. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. As always, remember to smash the like button and subscribe and you're to 1,000 subscribers. I'll see you guys in my next video.